Jaffe and his brother are also aware of the arrival of the females. When it comes to attracting a cow, in a flash, companions become rivals. Once upon a time, one tusk was also aroused by all the excitement. Today, it no longer has any significance for him. He wouldn't be able to deal with the confrontations with other bulls. His sons and grandsons, on the other hand, are very excited. For them, it's important to make the most of the female's willingness to mate and prevent others from taking advantage. In the end, however, Jappy only manages to achieve his goal by means of a trick. He abducts to achieve his goal by means of a trick. He abducts the alpha cow, Clarissa. While many of the inhabitants of the valley spend the night hours asleep, this is the time of the real desert dwellers. The Namib sand gecko is only active at night. In the darkness, the little predator looks for crickets and spiders. Like a frog's, its toes are webbed. This enables the lizard to seemingly fly across the dunes without sinking into the sand. But it also needs to be on the lookout. Similar to desert elephants, beetles, and geckos, the snake has a hard life in the Namib. It has to hunt successfully to survive. Once it finds a good spot for an ambush, it goes to ground. The snake is a predator that lies in wait for its prey, relying completely on its camouflage. sensitive gecko, it's time to go. In the sun, it would quickly dehydrate. Here, too, webbed feet come in handy. The lizard uses its legs as scoops to quickly dig out astonishing underground passages. It can make tunnels one meter long into the ground. ground level, another gecko isn't in quite such a hurry. With good reason. The fog is coming. The lizard's large, mirror-like eye surfaces allow the fog to condense here. At last, water. Um, 
The waiting paid off. This morning, the side winding adder can have breakfast and get some liquid into the bargain. The Namibian winter is coming to an end, and with it, the mild climate brought by the fog. Relentless heat descends on the Huani Valley. 40 degrees Celsius in the shade. This is approaching the limit for even Clarissa's family. Elephants don't sweat, and so protect themselves against overheating by fanning their ears. But it seems too hot even for that. The heat is hard to bear for all the animals, but for the youngest, the sun can be lethal. Maya is really suffering. Tusk mobilizes all his efforts for one last attempt at an anna tree. But he no longer has the strength. Exhausted, he withdraws to the shade. During his long life, his legs have carried him more than 400,000 kilometers. As with most bull elephants, the last few steps he will take alone. Despite the heat, Clarissa can't afford to take a break. She urges her family to move on. Desert elephants have to spend up to 20 hours a day eating 200 kilos of plant material. Tiring as that may be, Clarissa's family have no choice. One young bull is already so exhausted that he sleeps through the signal to move off. He only wakes up when the other elephants are already out of sight. Luckily for the huntress, the cubs quickly grasp the situation they can hardly wait to get their teeth into some fresh food. All the animals here are fighting for survival. The lionesses won this round. They've enough food now to last the coming weeks. Clarissa and her family have finally reached the neighboring Dry River Valley. The experienced cow knew instinctively that in times of drought, there was some precious greenery here to feed on. The exhausted animals can at last fill their stomachs again. And this is how a happy, full-up baby elephant looks. Maya in paradise. A strong wind blows in from the coast, and sandstorms form in the hinterland. the river valley where Clarissa and family have found food and shelter. Sandstorms like these are the harbingers of heavy rain. Experienced elephant cows like Clarissa know what that means. As soon as it rains, the dry river valleys will be turned into raging torrents that wash away anything in their path imminent danger for the family of elephants. Time to move on again. 
Now the safest place to be is outside the valleys. How right Clarissa was can be seen the following day. Water in the dry river valley. Only every 10 years or so is the rain strong enough for the flood wave to reach the sea. Just a few days later, the first green shoots begin the transformation of the dry river valleys. The Huanib Valley too is bursting with new life as the first exiles return. For one animal, however, the rain came too late. Hold one tusk succumbed to hunger before the first drops fell. The jackals find his body on the edge of the valley. Jackals don't approach the body until evening. And thus, the circle of life is complete. The next morning, long unheard calls echo through the valley. family survived the floods unscathed. Maya, too, is thriving. At last, the newly greened Huanib Valley comes into view. Clarissa's family is home again. Jappy will pass on the genes of his father, One Tusk, and with them, his strength and intelligence. Clarissa is pregnant with his baby. The alpha cow will induct each new generation into the secrets of the desert elephants. This is essential for their survival. The Huanib River Valley is probably the last real wilderness in Namibia, one in which only the cleverest, most intelligent of the animal world can survive. A life of extremes in the home of the desert elephants.